so actually the thing is that we will wait for 5 minutes so that more participants can join and then we will start the session basically this is the important session that you know that uh, how we are uh, most of us uh, few students they are preparing for their fcps intermediate module exams and many of the students they are done with their fcps so actually there should be guidance for all of you that how you have to basically start your preparation for international memberships the thing is that you know the situation how the things are going on so at time you may think of relocation or at times you may think that how you have to go about so all things should be in your hand and the other thing is that when you are uh, done with your fcps and you are doing your own practice you you are in your clinic at times you know that you are the only one who have to see the patients treat the patients and so many things are there so basically at that time actually your management matters and when we appear for these exams when we prepare for these exams at that time we come to know that okay how the management changes how our clinical practice gets polished while we go for these exams so that is the reason that actually uh, fcps should never be the limit uh, like uh, we should stop at fcps most of the time our journey of fcps is so tough that once we pass this fcps exam we say that okay now uh, i won't be doing anything and trust me the day i passed my fcps when my clinical exam result was declared so at that time i thought that okay i am done i have i have done everything i wanted now i won't be doing anything and uh, just i will do my clinical practice and everything is over now i won't be studying much but for doctors basically there is no limit one thing and the other thing is that now these days these memberships they are very important for us that we should be you know to uh, uh to you can say to go about with all the uh, memberships and now you should know that okay what what the clinical guidelines say like what are the european guidelines how you can um, polish your management for the patients while going through this what they say and then you should know that you when you will be going through some other membership like rcpi or irish guidelines then you will come to know okay so the few concepts they get cleared while you go through those guidelines or those study materials and then the clinical exam basically we uh, we prepare for fcps clinical exam we know that the system is tough we know that that exam is tough but trust me there are some areas there are few uh, things which you only know when you prepare for these clinical exams like uh, when you will prepare for oski when you prepare for uh, these exams then you will come to know that what are the four important areas of clinical practice that should be polished how you have to prepare and how you have to apply your knowledge what about the communication with the patient what about the risk assessment so all these things basically you only come to know when you prepare for these exams and at the end when you get some international memberships that gives you added benefit wherever you go so that is basically the importance of these webinar series like when i was a student and i was preparing for my i was in residency i was preparing for intermediate module or my fcps exam there was no guidance available at that time i had no idea that i should prepare for my mrcog part 1 while i am preparing for my fcps part 1 no one guided me at that time it was not a trend that someone uh, guides you that while you start your preparation for intermediate module you should start your preparation for efog abcog exam you should start your preparation for mrcpi part 2 you should start your preparation for mrcog part 2 exam in the same way 
it is the situation that when you are planning for your fcps part 2 written and fcps part 2 clinical exam at that time basically this is mandatory that you can prepare for the oski exams while you are preparing for your clinical exam so most of the things most of the you see the, the management of some you can say endometriosis won't change there there might be mild differences in the guidelines but actually the management remains the same a patient who is in labor the management won't change when you have to apply the instrument when you have to go for spontaneous vaginal delivery when you have to go for cesarean section that management would be the same but you should know that how all these things they are same how you can prepare simultaneously for various exams how you can plan your see there are so many things which you have to plan you have to plan your budget you have to plan your uh, preparation you have to manage so many things if you are working you have to plan your holiday if uh, you have to uh, you know prepare for these exams so this is the most important thing that which you have to keep in mind and how you have to prepare at the same time how you have to plan at the same time and that would become easier for you so uh, i welcome you all for this session uh, that you have joined this session so i will make uh, your queries which are in your mind that how whether you are able to plan and prepare at the same time for this exam how you can prepare simultaneously how much preparation is the same for these exams and how you can take up the exam what are the requirements like uh, what is needed to appear in this exam how many parts for the exam and the most important thing that how much much is the registration fee for these exams so all these things for our students who are practicing at pakistan or uh, even if you have joined us from somewhere else these things matter these things are important for you to know so i will clarify your mind and i will tell you that how i prepared for these exams and how you can do the same and you can prepare for these exams so uh, once again welcome from study medic and the basic agenda is to learn together and to grow together we want you to get um, that we want to see that you are getting international memberships and that is the basic agenda that these webinar series are arranged for your guidance they are arranged for your uh, knowledge that how you have to go about for these exams okay so uh, once you plan anything basically it needs some dedication it needs some hard work it needs that you are focused and the most important thing which which should be engraved in your mind that is basically you should think that you are capable of doing all these things it it should never be in the mind that i won't be able to pass this exam how i can do this everyone uh, in front of you they are doing this so in the same way you have the same capacity you are capable of doing this and you will be able to uh, go through this exam very easily just you have to plan in appropriate way you have to stay persistent in uh, during the whole process of preparation there might be ups and downs you might be worried there might be some uh, uh, you know busy schedules and all these things they can affect you but you have to stay persistent and consistency basically is the thing that that changes average people to brilliant people so all excuses should be aside and always keep in mind that you are capable of going for this exam you are capable of getting through this exam and but you have to put some efforts and dreams they always demand hustle so that is the main reason that you can go through these exams and you can pass these exams very easily so basically let's have some motivation and let's see that how we should plan and how we should dream about various memberships and various international exams and um, what we can do
so basically the uh, message which we get from these motivational videos or from these motivational speakers basically the thing is that there is no limit for the dreams sky should be the limit even if you will fall you will be among the stars okay so dare to dream big and then you should be able to achieve those dreams you should put some efforts to achieve those dreams and then definitely you would be there it's not like that whenever dedication and passion is there whenever hard work is there whenever focus is there definitely no one can stop you from achieving your dreams and this is the same thing i would assure you that sky is the limit there should be no limit that you you have to dream big and you have to achieve your goals so why we need this guidance why why we are no uh, we basically when we are preparing uh, for our fcps exam we are doing the residency we are not having any uh, guidance but we should be guided that what can be the plans what is plan a what is plan b and what is plan c so why this guidance is needed that uh, what you should think about that which jobs can be better for me so few people you know when we are uh, uh, during mbbs many of the friends uh, they go for uh, uh, academic jobs like they uh, go for mphil and uh, they like teaching and others they go for clinical jobs so basically this should be in our mind while we are during our mbbs or while we are in our house job and mind should be clear that what we have to do then first step is that you have decided now you should know that what are the various pathways which i have to follow like which steps i have to take after house job i have to go for my pmdc registration then if i am preparing for fcps part 1 i have to prepare for my exam if i am planning for mrcog part 1 then definitely i have to plan the things in that way if i am going for mrcpi in ops and gyne then i have to think about the uh, ways that how i have to prepare what are the uh, reading sources how you have to prepare how much time is required to complete this membership okay so all these things they basically should be planned and definitely when you have to plan your studies you have to plan your work as well like which job you will be doing like uh, definitely when you have to go for international membership exams you need the uh, you have to pay the fee as well so your requirement is that you should be earning and you should be studying so that all these things basically they should be managed side by side while you are in residency you are getting a salary so uh, fcps registrations we know that they are not much like you you can manage easily so during those days you can also manage you can also plan for your international memberships like some part is covered along with preparation is same you just have to plan and then you just have to go for these exams so today's webinar is about that why efog epcog what is efog epcog this is basically european fellowship of obstetrics and gynecology by european board of obstetrics and gynecology and this is basically covering uh various countries um, in europe once you are going for this exam you will get a certificate of fellowship for uh, for this okay so what are the requirements how you can go for this exam like you should know that if i have to go for uk so what is the pathway if i i have a plan to go for europe so what is the pathway if you are planning to go ireland so what's the pathway so all these things they should be in your mind so epcog is basically european board college of obstetrics and gynecology and this exam it comprises of two parts or two components part 1 and part 2 okay so what is the training requirement for this efog epcog and how you can go so you should know that there are various international memberships available and efog epcog is among those which belongs to europe okay so this is european fellowship and the other thing is that what is the global perspective of this membership 
why you have to go for this exam so how it can benefit you what are the various parts of this exam like part 1 part 2 part 3 or only part 1 and part 2 how long it will take to complete it like how much time is required it's not like that you have to prepare for part 1 definitely this is extensive knowledge based exam so you have to prepare then you have to pass if it is a difficult exam analytical questions are there then once you have passed your part 1 how much time is required for the clinical exam okay so then can we prepare these exams simultaneously like you are preparing for your fcps so can you prepare for efog epcog or if you are preparing for mrcpi exam so can you prepare for efog epcog definitely yes you can prepare 60 to 70% of the things are same just few guidelines are different so when you are uh, preparing for one exam that is the best time period that you can take another exam so i basically passed my mrcpi and epcog simultaneously i was preparing for the written part simultaneously for mrcpi and epcog first it was epcog then i took mrcpi written then i took epcog oski and then i took mrcpi oski so both the preparation was same for clinical exams the preparation was same for the written it was a bit difference but somehow you you are able to manage it and you can go for it so what sort of specific preparation you need for these exams that is important that how you have to prepare the reason is that you are doing a job you are in clinical practice or you are doing your residency how much time is available to go for these exams okay so how you can prepare what are the reading materials available and what you can do how what are the supportive groups available for your study okay this is the most important thing that you have seen that if you have passed your fcps 2 years or 3 years back there was no such study groups available like you have to struggle on your own now a lot of guidance is there so many people they are guiding you they are telling you that how you can uh, prepare the for these exams smartly so you just have to choose your brand wisely that uh, what should be the um, uh, courses you should go for those courses which can help you in passing this exam in one go and what are the things you have to follow if you have planned to go for these exams okay so these are the important things so efog epcog it comprises of two parts okay so basically part 1 is written and part 2 is oski initially it was till last year it was only one year but now in 2023 written exam is twice like it was on 13th may and now the next exam is on 3rd september okay and the clinical exam in 2022 there was covid we know so it was online exam the oski or clinical exam it was virtual exam but now this is face to face exam in 2022 it took place in europe lisbon but now um, the centers can be in some somewhere in middle east as well so that is not a difficulty you uh, you to get visa for these exams that is not difficult you, the college send you a letter so you can apply for visa and you easily get the visa and then you can go uh, for clinical exam but keep in mind that this is face to face exam in this year it can uh, it can be um, the center can be anywhere in the middle east like riyadh uae or oman so you can go for these exams easily and the clinical exam is also not a problem that uh, you have to go to europe for this exam okay so types of the exam in part 1 basically the most beautiful thing is that you can give your exam from home like this is virtual exam okay so uh, it can be through uh, you know uh, they give you an app to install in your laptop you install that software okay so all the privacy check is done okay all the demo is given to you 
and then you can take your exam uh, from home just internet connection should be there there are two papers 3 hours each one for obstetrics and the other uh, paper is for gynecology okay one hour break is there and you can appear for this exam and there are single best answers as well as extended match questions in this uh, part 1 exam okay so that is a bit difficult exam i would say that it is a bit difficult exam very well prepared very well designed questions are there analytical questions are there if you are prepared well then you can easily pass the clinical exam uh, in 2022 it was online exam but in um, in 2021 it was online exam in 2022 it was face to face exam and now again it would be face to face exam okay so what is the cost of exam that is the most important thing so exam fee once you apply for the exam you have to submit 100 euros okay so once your uh, all the doc documents they are attested then they give you the confirmation okay so once confirmation is done then uh, you have to pay the, the rest of the fee so 100 euros basically they are uh, equal to almost 30000 rupees okay 30000 pkr so that is uh, required for attestation of your papers and then rest of the fee 525 euros you have to pay that is equals to 1 lakh 60000 registration fee okay once you pass this exam then you have to go for clinical exam and the fee for clinical exam is 700 euros 700 euros is basically you can say it is almost 2 lakh 15000 okay 2 lakh 15000 is the uh, fee for clinical exam and then there is some travel cost as well that you have to apply visa you have to go there for uh, um, if uh, exam is for one day so almost 3 4 days you have to stay there so that travel cost is there okay so how how much time duration is required for this exam that is one year okay in one year in if it is taking place in may you can take written exam in may and then you can pass your uh, you know then you can pass your um, exam uh, in uh, september you can go for oski okay so that is basically required for this exam so it comprises of two components i told you okay so this is basically part 1 is knowledge based assessment part 2 is clinical assessment so how they are basically assessing you in clinical assessment that is basically uh, you are assessed on the first thing is history taking and then uh, handing over your patient uh, to your colleagues okay so how you take the history how you evaluate the patient and how once your shift is over how you are handing over the patient to your colleagues the second thing is that uh, basic technical skills like basic technical skills are like taking a pap smear you can say okay uh, his um, this hysteroscopy laparoscopy okay then uh, tubal ligation these um, uh, uh, compression you try in compression sutures all these minor skills they come uh, under basic technical skills then one station is for complex technical skills complex technical skill is basically the team work like you have to uh, you have a patient uh, a mother has collapsed okay she is having hemorrhage so how you have to manage the patient how you have to start the resuscitation how many team members are required for this okay and then uh, uh, how you have to communicate with the blood bank who will be taking care of blood arrangement who will be taking care of all the documentation how you will be performing the resuscitation who will go and counsel the patients debriefing would be done all these things are important and these are basically under complex technical skills then there comes like risk assessment some something something has happened like some never event has taken place how you have to manage that how you you have to do the risk assessment how you have to do the risk treatment to prevent that 
uh, event happening in the future okay then there comes like shared management plan you have to take the history of that patient you have to uh, apply clinical knowledge you have to discuss the plan of management with the patient and you have to formulate a plan of management with the patient dealing with a difficult patient like a patient she is not agreed for cesarean section there is fetal distress prolonged induction is there so you have uh, some someone has done the scan transvaginal scan for the patient but a proper consent was not there so all these things are important okay and then uh, there comes like uh, audit and clinical governance questions are there okay so uh, communication with the patient breaking the bad news how you have to break the bad news all these things they are the part of cl your clinical exam okay so once you have passed your both exams so what like you will go to europe and you will start working so this is basically not a licensing exam that you, uh, you you will be able to go and you will start work there but definitely this is a fellowship um, of european board and college of obstetrics and gynecology and it is giving you uh, an extra mileage but to start work there then there are certain other requirements which you have to fulfill but the basic requirement is fellowship which you you can uh, uh, complete through this exam okay so part one requirements are that you should have a primary uh, medical degree then the candidate must be listed on the registered uh, register of medical practitioners okay like you should be registered in pakistan medical and dental council then you uh, uh, candidate will be able to sit the exam at the end of their mandatory national specialist training program like you should uh, you should be enrolled in some national specialist training program even even if you are going for ms you are going for fcps or you have entered into your specialization then you should have a minimal experience of four years in the post graduate training posts then you can go for this exam and the candidate they are asked to provide evidence of their good standing as well as evidence of their work experience is required and um, you have to provide the clinical experience and post graduate training since graduation okay then you have to certify that you are not currently suspended or removed from any medical practice under national medical act so all these are the requirements for uh, for you to go for this fellowship exam so that's why this is important that uh, how you can go for this exam okay so then there comes the part 2 requirement once you have passed your part 1 exam then part 2 requirement is just you should have a passport okay so part 1 result is required you have passed and you have to pay the registration fee visa is not a problem like uh, the college issues you a letter that you can get is a visa easily and now in future maybe the exam is taking place in uh, uae or uh, oman or riyadh so that becomes more easier instead of going to europe for the exam okay that becomes easier like to go for uh, uae for exam is not a difficult task so that that problem is also solved so now what about the part 1 exam when it will take place part 1 uh, exam was on 13th may okay that was virtual exam uh, it was online exam and the next exam is on 2nd september 2023 and the registration is open these days for to book that exam okay you can book that exam and you can appear in september there is sufficient time that you can prepare well and uh, you can easily go th for this exam and clinical for the clinical exam the dates are to be announced once this may exam result will be declared after that the dates of the clinical exam for the september uh, would they would be announced okay and those candidates who are going uh, for exam in september then the dates for their clinical exam they would be announced after their result is declared so now at the moment registration is open for your part 1 efog abcog exam which is the exam date is 2nd september 2023 so if you plan to go for this exam you can easily go for that exam
okay basically part 1 is two papers as i told you one paper is obstetrics and the other paper is gynae okay so each paper it comprises of 35 single best answers and 30 extended match questions and for the reading material basically Mm, uh the reading material is uh, you have to uh, read the textbook by uh, uh, efog epcog the college has a postgraduate textbook in obstetrics and gynecology so you have to read that book and you have to cover the green top guidelines and nice guidelines and there are certain um, specific guidelines like ishre isog they need to be read and fsh rh and bash Uh, contraception and female sexual and reproductive health that should be covered from uh, uh, fsh rh and dash okay so this is about part 1 exam the clinical exam basically i told you that it is uh, comprising of nine tasks are there so these nine tasks are the um, communication with the uh, with your colleague and history taking then basic technical skill complex technical skills and team work skills communication and application of applied clinical knowledge and formulation of a shared management plan and powerpoint presentation skills are were also there like when i took oski one uh, station was that they give us a short topic and uh, we have to prepare the presentation ppt and then we had to present and it was like tocolytic agents so you have to prepare then they see basically if uh, like what about your teaching skills what about your presentation skills and all these things were important okay then dealing with a difficult patient as i told you that the patient is unhappy some, something has happened that they had unpleasant experience that how you can satisfy your patient okay the risk assessment and risk management it it is all checked like there is provision of wrong reports to the patient okay somehow uh, you have missed uh, to uh, disclose the diagnosis of uh, to the patient all these things are important which are basically checked in these clinical exams and they are so good for your clinical practice as well like once you learn how to deal with a difficult patient then it becomes easier for you that whenever on daily basis while you are in your clinical practice you see so many patients they face difficulty they, they have some problems so you can manage them easily and this is basically an added benefit to your clinical practice and those who have already cleared mrcog or fcps exam then the, this exam is very easier for them as they have gone for written they have prepared for their written uh, they have gone through 60 to 80% of the syllabus and they have appeared in clinical exam so it is uh, the same that they can easily pass this exam passing the exam like why you should go for exam this exam like most of the people you you will always uh, ask me that what is the added benefit like definitely once you are european fellow so there is something like you have passed one fellowship exam it is a quality mark for you which might be used in your country like everyone would at your workplace they will say that you have passed your european fellowship if you are going somewhere you relocate somewhere that that is also an added quality mark for you okay additionally this might give you an extra mark if you decide to work in european country okay uh, provided that you fulfill all the necessary requirements whenever you are going for you plan to go for any european country definitely you have to this is i as i told you that this is not a license to work in european countries but you are fellow of european board definitely when you will start work there this is you have to fulfill certain other requirements as well and then you will get extra mileage for this this exam is prestigious qualification by the european board definitely uh, a valuable addition on your cv and it is the highest honor uh, that abco can award okay so this is the highest uh, degree by the prestigious college that they can award you this fellowship and you can go for for this fellowship uh, exam
but this exam is not a substitute for the national assessment system like you say you can say that okay uh, i won't go for fcps and i want to go for apcoc no then it is it, it it is basically difficult so your journey basically the purpose of this guidance is that your journey should go side by side for these two exams you should plan and prepare side by side for these two exams and once you you have completed your training you should go for these exams and you can easily pass these exams in one go okay so the question is that can you prepare simultaneously for these exams definitely you can do it okay this is very easy that you can prepare simultaneously uh, for these exams okay so need of the r that now you know the situation you know that how much difficulty is getting the slots in international memberships so you should try and you should start uh, planning for this exam 75 to 85% of all these exam preparation is the same okay so then it is not a difficulty there are few things which are different and you can manage it very well and you can uh, go for these exams okay and then it is always good idea it is always better to prepare together and clear to uh, together okay and efog epcog exams are happening once a uh, year only okay like uh, they were happening once a year but now in 2023 uh, the written exam is twice okay so these things you have to keep in mind and in one year you can complete this fellowship and you have to achieve your dreams in short uh, span of time okay this is the most important thing that you plan that okay i will take uh, my written exam in may I, and i will take my uh, oski in september okay you can take your written exam in september and then you can uh, you know go for oski and uh, in next so look at your priorities and plan a year in advance decide which degree or membership to start first okay always be ready for alternative exam with adequate preparation okay and choose the right and reliable study platform like where you have to prepare how you have to prepare and it is always better to follow single study style pattern that many different ones like if you are following so many groups then you may end up in uh, you know um, bad choice or in trouble so just you the rule is basically you just have to follow one thing one study group one book okay so one platform that is basically the key to pass any exam and time management and always look for the opportunities that how you can go for these memberships and how you have to go and the target should be within 2 years three international degrees should be in your hand okay this should be your target so then there comes basically why study medic why study medic is so much concerned about your career guidance basically we are number one course provider for mrcog mrcpi and efog abcoc and the most important thing is that european board and college of obstetrics and gynecology they are official partners with study medic for provision of courses like uh, the faculty from prestigious college they are with us in providing the courses for efog epcog exam and the best course directors and mentors are there to train you and to guide you one and only reliable medical education provider whom you can trust that okay 100% success is there when you join for the courses multiple options of courses are at there like you are unable to join 6 months course 3 months plan is there you are unable to join 3 months course 6 weeks course is there you are unable to join 6 weeks course 1 month course is there 2 weeks course is there 2 days course is there so multiple options are there at one place and you can choose the right choice like right course what suits you what suits your budget what suits your timeline everything is important and basically digital it is a digital platform learning management system is there mobile app of study medic is there e courses are there like you can uh, we provide you the whole uh, study material and you can uh, read on your own ease and e books are there uh, for the exam preparation all guidelines summaries are provided daily activity questions exam tested questions are provided 
session recordings are provided and the session slides they are provided to you to read and so that you can revise the things easily so that's why you have to choose your brand wisely that how you have to prepare and how you have to plan and study medic is basically an international organization it is a registered company in india as well as pakistan and we are providing all national and international membership exams including mrcog mrcpi fcps fcog mrcs frcs mdms uh, dnb ggo then um, ultrasound courses are there vaginal surgery courses are there then mrcpch courses are there mrcp courses are there so uh, 35 plus courses international memberships they are provided by study medic and the mentors they are from uh europe they are from uk they are from pakistan oman india saudi arabia abu dhabi and this is basically a thing that you can plan and you can prepare in that way the upcoming courses for efog epco part 1 exam one course is starting from 1st june which is the regular course and it is basically a comprehensive long term course for the best preparation okay the whole syllabus is covered live sessions are there session recordings are provided then uh, library uh, all the guidelines summaries are there okay then regular mocks are taking place all in mock exams exam tested questions uh, they are there in your library 24 by 7 it support is there and motivation and de stress sessions they and psychological boosters are there for you so what are the learning styles basically you know at times you cannot uh, study and prepare in the same way like you have to read from paper book you have to at times while you are doing something you are driving or anything you can just go through the recording so auditory learning style is there at times like you can go through the session recording you can see the slides and you can learn that is the visual uh, learning uh, system okay and at times basically uh, while for preparing for clinical exam role players are there okay so uh, there, there are so, um, some motivational sessions are there and wisdom shots are there on you know, all important topics so you basically are learning through various systems and that is giving you an added benefit okay so in this way we made you learn each and everything there is no shortcut to success but we make your journey easier and just like that way your mentors basically they are supporting you to achieve your international membership exams okay so take passion and dedication with you you should be determined enough to go for the, these exams and if passion and dedication is there then you can go for okay so this is the last message so basically you have to build your future you have to start your preparation okay so this is the thing that you have to plan we will help you to prepare okay so that was all about this um, uh, efog epcog exam if you feel any difficulty if you have any queries you can ask me you can unmute yourself and you can ask hello no queries okay thank you so much for joining the session and even if you later on you feel that th there are certain queries in your mind that uh, what you can do how you have to go for these exams you can tag me in your study groups and i would be there to help you okay thank you so much you can unmute noor uh
हेलो अस्सलाम वालेकुम अस्सलाम यस नूर जी डॉक्टर मैंने ये पूछना था कि ये एग्जाम जो है हमें एम आर पहले देना चाहिए या ये वाला एग्जाम आफ्टर एफ सी पी एस आई हैव क्लियर्ड एफ सी पी एस एंड आई एम वर्किंग एज एन असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर सो अभी मैं ये कर रही हूँ कि अब कौन सा एग्जाम इसमें पहले दूँ basically see and what you have cleared your fcps yeah you have cleared your fcps and now you are uh, working as assistant professor the thing is that if yes. you have to start your mrcog journey definitely mrcog it has its own significance and european board it has its own significance if you ask me that what you should go first i would say that mrcog is a long journey okay this is a bit longer journey but epcog is a bit short journey you can complete it in just 10 months time period so you should go for it first okay so uh, what's the advantage of this exam can we get gmc registration if i am planning to uh, shift uh, for this, see, this is a european yeah. exam this is a european exam this is giving you the fellowship certificate of europe and european countries if you intend to go for gmc registration then the pathway is M either mrcog or either uh, mrcpi for gmc basically you can go for mrcpi and uh, mrcog this is european board exam europe and uk they are different yes now they are different theek okay. hai uh, yeah so you will get european fellowship by this exam and the uh, european countries would be included in that so after passing this exam are we allowed to practice over there or should uh, then we have to enter into any residency program no there is after no residency program like you have to enter any residency program four years uh, practical experience is already required but there are certain licensing exams like if you set relocate to saudi arabia you have to uh, pass uh, saudi licensing exam if you are going to uh, um, uh, this uh, uae or qatar you have to pass pro metric exams and you know certain licensing exams and certain requirements What are there which You have to fulfill to start. Yeah, so definitely. The here you have to uh, you have to go for their licensing exams. This is not a license to practice. This is a certificate for fellowship. Okay. Then certain so other requirements you have to fulfill. Ah, okay, okay. Say so certain it, other requirements are there which you have to fulfill. Okay. Thank you so much. no problem no problem so anyone else who is having any queries hello 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 okay uh one thing more i i want to ask uh, actually yes. i'm uh, doing my uh, epic registration and i am having some problem uh i think this question is not related with the topic today's topic yeah. but can you help me with this uh, i have some problem with this that uh, uh, the registration notary camp which problem registration? Problem. which registration which registration epic epic uh, okay okay can you please uh, do you have uh, my contact details uh i can take it from this uh, dr tazeen are you dr tazeen yes yes okay uh, yes i think i have your contact number okay you can connect me and i will guide you okay 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 thank you so no, much no problem no problem yes aisha hello aisha Hello, uh, Dr. Tazin. I am Dr. Aisha, and um, yes, Dr. I just Aisha. Thank you to, yeah, thank you so much for the uh, nice uh, guidance you have given about this uh, E uh, E C O G what uh, um, E F O G E P C O G. Yeah, E P C O G. European uh, Board and College of Obstetrics and Gynecology. Yeah, I just need to ask that uh, 
um, uh, um, can we get the seeds easily as MRCPI uh, exams? Uh, yes, and... yes, yes. The seeds are basically this exam. The beauty of this exam is that the registration links, they are open just uh, 15 days before exam. Like if the exam is on 13th May, the registration links are open till 14th April. And there is no mm. problem in seat allocation. Like this is online exam and the, the, this European board, they are generous enough that no one is rejected. So that is actually okay. at the moment, I would say that that is the best thing we can do. Like, uh, you know, for RCPI, how much is the problem mm. in getting seats for MRCOG even? Uh, this yeah. time there were no seats in Pakistan and uh, after that the few seats were released but for this exam this is the best time like uh, you yeah. you can prepare for this exam a lot of guidance is there and then again mm -hmm. the seats are easily available the reason is that at the moment there is not much awareness as well you know exactly. that be being Pakistan is how much awareness we have about this exam mm -hmm. Yeah, so exactly. once it would be like everyone now gradually once we have started this career guidance plans now people know that okay they have to plan something they have to prepare mm -hmm. simultaneously and in coming next six months it would be it would be a different era like everyone yeah, exactly. would be planning simultaneously for different exams so it's better to start it as early as possible yeah exactly i need to ask one more question that uh, let's suppose if we uh, if somebody appears in september then uh, what is the um, when will be the oski exam just immediately after the return or it will, uh, it will be, uh, it, no 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 uh, i uh, the um, oski dates for september exam might be in jan or feb okay okay it's not announced yet but once hmm. you're in four to four weeks your re return result would be announced so that would be first week of October okay hmm. then okay. Uh, uh, it can be in December or Jan okay Oski okay. dates would be announced and uh, where will be the exams uh, where we have to go for the Oski exam this written exam is from home like this okay. is online exam you just need uh, a good internet connection and a laptop okay. Okay. okay, but for so OSCE, that OSCE. is face to face exam. You have to travel, and that can be anywhere in Middle East. Uh, can it be in UK as well? No, in UK, that is not the center. Basically, okay. last exam in 2022, it was in Europe. It was in Lisbon, Portugal. But now, okay. uh, actually, the uh, thing is that uh, there would be centers in Middle East as well. Okay, actually, I'm residing in UK. And I, I just wanted to ask about that. If OSCE is being from there. UK, basically, uh, uh, if the centers are there in Europe, you can uh, mm. from UK to travel to uh, Lisbon or somewhere is more easy as compared to UAE. Otherwise, yeah, the centers can be UAE, Riyadh, Oman. Okay. Okay, so that so is basically all depends hmm. upon the college that where the center is announced, how many uh, candidates are there for the clinical exam. Depending mm -hmm. upon all these situations, the centers would be announced. Okay. But the thing is that you just have to take the first step. It is always yeah. the first step is difficult. Once you are done with your part one, then it, it's not difficult that you uh, where you have to go for OSCE. Then uh, yeah. all the things, they become clear. It's not a problem. Yeah, yeah exactly. you just have to make up your mind that I have to go or like when I booked this exam out yeah. of nowhere, I was planning for EBCOG. Like, but the thing is that one day just uh, I booked that exam. I started pre uh, preparation. Meanwhile, uh, the, uh, my RCPI application was accepted. So mm -hmm. all the things were going on simultaneously. At times, I also felt that I should quit. I should give up. But no, uh, actually, all the things, they become clear and all the things, they become easier. Yeah. And uh, Dr. Tazim, uh, uh, like uh, when your application for RCPI was accepted, like uh, how many? My application, yeah, my application for RCPI, it was accepted yeah. third time. But okay. now my friends, they, their applications, they got accepted for the very first time. So now it's okay. not that major issue. Okay. The, okay. This Thank time, you. OSCE uh, application, it was accepted first time, but return, I got seat uh, third, in third, third prime. Time. Okay. 
okay thank you so much dr tazim for okay thank you so much girls and i hope you will start now for your preparation uh, dr sidra says that can you please guide a little bit about mrcog and mrcpi although it's not a relevant topic mrcpi career guidance is coming up so we will be guiding you in detail about mrcpi how to start how to plan how to prepare okay in 4 to 5 days uh, there would be a session and we will guide you in details about that okay sidra okay thank you so much thank you so much everyone for joining and the next uh, webinar series and the next webinar of the series we will update you do join to know about mrcpi how to take how to start how to pl plan and what are the requirements and what are the exemptions as well that uh, when the part 1 is exempted and how to prepare okay thank you so much take care bye bye